Hello and welcome back to another game review. My name is Saiken and today we're going to answer the question Is Stargate Timekeepers worth it? I have reviewed the game, got it right at the release date and played it for a bit. So we're going to do the review in our typical fashion. As always, I want to remind you I am reviewing the games not like modern reviewers where everybody uh, thinks that everything is 7 or uh, or above. We're going to review it with a little bit more strict review. 5 is an average or 6 is an average game. 7 is a good game, 8 is a great game, 9 is a game of the year type of game and 10 is a genre defining game. So where does Stargate Timekeepers land? Alright, let's jump right into the first category, which is lore and background. Stargate is a lore and background rich environment where with a movie releasing in the 90s and then 10 different uh, seasons of the same series with 20 to 22 episodes each, we're looking at a whole universe with more than 200 episodes plus a movie to choose from. Needless to say that that is a quite information and lore dense background which in itself already is a rich pool to fish from. So why does uh, Stargate Timekeepers then only achieve a subpar score on the lore department? Well, um, if you look at the way that they were actually going about uh, the lore, I think there were a couple of opportunities uh, that have been missed in that department. For starters, uh, if you are going to work on a movie uh, IP or movie franchise and then create a game around it, there's always going to be an uphill battle because people suspect that it is simply a money grab and that the only thing that is good about it is the name and the actual product isn't so much. So you need to go extra careful and tread lightly with making sure that fans of the genre as well as newcomers uh, will be welcomed by the lore and the atmosphere. A game that did that excellent in 2023 was aliens uh, who figured a, out a good way with an introduction with simply a good coherent storyline and a slow but steady dripping of information plus hiding of uh, easter eggs to both BP's newcomers to the genre as well as those who know the world very very well. Stargate uh, approaches things a little bit different shall we say. So for starters you are assumed to have at least watched the movie and a few of the episodes of the show elsewise all of the characters and the terminology wouldn't make sense. The game throws you right into a conflict, doesn't explain a lot about it, there is no real in introduction nor is there any background and that's really a missed opportunity there is not even a lock or a lore uh, background that describes the world building in a world that is so ultra rich like uh, uh, Stargate I would have expected quite sincerely more from the game and since the game is using the title of Stargate in order to appeal to the audience, it is a double miss because the fans of the genre will feel left out a little bit because uh, you're either not getting it right or uh, you're not displaying it correctly. And those who are new within the game genre are just frankly asking themselves what's even going on. So 4 out of 10 from the lore and background. And that neatly brings us to the next category, graphics and graphical user interfaces. So that also includes any form of animation, etc, etc. Let's go through that real quick. So in modern games, it's a, a fun time to be a programmer because a lot of uh, the material, as in modeling and textures, uh, are already to a degree available. Graphic cards are doing the heavy lifting, so I need to be a bit harsher on the way that I'm judging graphics in uh, the graphical user interface. Let's start with graphics in particular. Uh, the graphics of uh, the game are not up to date. In terms of a single A or double A title that uh, Stargate Timekeepers wants to be, it is okay to look at, but if you have just seen the introduction, you can already see that a lot of the animation is actually quite static. That was potentially one of uh, the worst 
uh, dogfights of uh, interceptors that I've seen in a while. That has frankly been done much better in other games. A lot of uh, the graphic that you're seeing here, as in the fire texture, the blurring effect, uh, the uh, nice little shading, all of that comes from the um, uh, graphic cards itself. And if you look closely, you can see that the textures sometimes are not even in high resolution. Mind you, this here is ultra high res, so that's as good as the game will and, uh, always look. So I'm going to showcase how this compares to a 20 years old game of the same genre, Commando, and then you can make up your mind whether or not that's worth 20 or 25 years of development. All right, so we do have a side-by-side -side comparison of both of the games. Keep in mind there are 20 years in between uh, them and a lot of uh, the higher resolution is simply coming uh, from the graphical card and not from the actual assets. My point that I'm trying to drive home is there is a severe lack of good textures that are being uh, used, which makes it very hard to look at uh, the game for a longer period of time. It looks static. It looks a lot like uh, the programmers have simply taken base assets and uh, base characters, 3D rendered them and put relatively uh, simple looking textures on top of it. And that really shows. My second point of criticism why the game itself scores relatively low on the graphical user interface is, again, over the period of time, specifically in the last, say, 10-15 years, graphical user interfaces have substantially improved. So nowadays, the minimum standards for a good graphical user interface are much higher. I do appreciate that they have chosen an overall clean design, but there are points of criticisms to be raised uh, coming from, for instance, multi-platforming. So uh, I give you an example. Since the game released on multiple platforms, you do have an extra shift button that you need to press uh, in order to uh, get some of the actions off. The um, entire user interface itself from the cooldown uh, display onwards isn't really as intuitive as you would uh, guess. Some of it is good, like the amount of times that you can use an ability, but most of it really feels clunky and hastily put uh, together. Some of the important items in the user interface, for instance, the highlight button, which is at the minimap, aren't even uh, shortcutted and uh, shown, which assumes that the game de uh, designer for some reason thought that that wouldn't be a major thing if you're playing through the game. So that, as well as just simple sight of uh, enemies and ease of understanding where you are, makes it very uh, non-intuitive to play the game to say the least and if I'm comparing uh, those games with their spiritual ancestors then I would be expecting at least a substantial upgrade instead of a side grade uh, with a little bit of more fancy graphics so there we go that's unfortunately three out of ten uh, my suggestion for improvement because I don't just want to review a game and uh, say it's bad would be that the game fundamentally needs to rethink um, how it wants to approach graphic. I do understand there are uh, limitations in terms of budget, but I think uh, the, uh, the studio here could have simply done a better job in getting the uh, graphics up to a more modern standard. And sometimes uh, less is more. You can have uh, less different models if they are pro uh, procedurally uh, generated and if you do have textures that are just slightly different it makes it a little bit more livable. When I'm looking at uh, Stargate uh, from a top-down perspective specifically zoomed out it is comparable with a remastered Warcraft uh, 3 and that's not really the top end of uh, graphic and uh, gaming engines to be entirely uh, honest. So. I don't think that they have done themselves a favor in releasing it with that level of graphics. Let's move on to the next point. We are nicely coming to sound and FX. That will be a rather short category. I think nothing fancy, but also nothing out of the ordinary. I think the uh, main tune and the menu, the music in the background is adequate for the game. I think the 
text-to-speech, uh, AI voices uh, that are uh, generating a full narration around every written dialogue uh, is good as well. I think that is a budget-friendly but still nice feature to make sure that uh, you are able to kind of portray actual interaction instead of just reading long lines of text. And the weapon sounds themselves are okay as well. Um, it is nothing to necessarily write home about. There are just very few weapons to begin with, so the uh, range of different sounds isn't as spectacular. And from time to time, the um, used sounds don't necessarily match what is happening. For instance, the bare fist knockdown sounds very much like the knockdown uh, of uh, someone using a stick. The hastily throwing someone over the ledge uh, scream of anyone falling to their death is merely a nice little cackle instead of really a proper scream. So I think there could have been done more uh, with um, a little bit more attention to detail in order to get an above uh, average score. However, on the pure uh, music and sound and FX uh, department, the game is right on average. Which nicely brings us to the tactical gameplay feature. Let's start with the good or the positive here. A lot of the tactics in terms of ongoing tutorials are being shown to the player. So you never really feel completely out of touch. The game does a good job in exploring and explaining new mechanics at a reasonable pace. You're getting new enemies from time to time as well as new mechanics that you're going to learn over time. That makes it an easy and enjoyable learning experience whilst you go through the game. However, there are a couple of limitations for the game. And the reason why I scored tactical gameplay particularly low was twofold. Number one, the game itself isn't excelling at what it tries to be. As a spiritual successor of the Commando's little swat behind the enemy lines approach, the game isn't necessarily excelling at that. If you want to create a game that excels at uh, that, you need to make sure that the gameplay loop doesn't become boring over time. Meaning, you want to make sure that the mission objectives and the uh, play and feel doesn't always revolve into there's a room of guys, they have different view angles, and you now need to find a way of how to take out each of these guys based on your abilities. Unfortunately, that is where Stargate uh, Timekeepers falls short, where a lot of uh, the core gameplay mechanic isn't very enjoyable after you have done it a couple of times. The first time that you are knocking someone down, binding them up, or synchronizing your strikes, it is great. Some of the features are actually really good and well thought through so that you can pause the game and essentially approach multiple enemies at a time. However, once you do that two or, two or three times, it's kind of a saturation and diminishing returns. And once you do it 10, 20, 40, 50 times, the game loop becomes less and less fun. The environment isn't really utilized to its full extent. Granted, there are a couple of options like climbing up higher elevations or scouting out enemies in advance, but the whole uh, array of options that you could get out of the terrain and the circumstances aren't utilized to their full extent. The second part about my criticism, and that is where I am going to be a little bit more harsh on the game, is just the wonky controls. I don't know if I should chip it up to a multi-platform release where the game essentially is released on PC and a couple of other platforms or whether it is simple oversight or too early release. There are a couple of just blatant bugs where, the en uh, where your own characters are refusing to take on the enemies. Sometimes there is just a stuttering uh, the core gameplay means knocking someone out, then binding them up, and oftentimes a patrol comes around and you want to carry uh, the corpse or the uh, unconscious person away. And that these three steps in a row are very seldomly going to work 
There's always time in between, giving the uh, patrols time to catch up, and a lot of frustration is coming out of it. If you just look at the finicky nature of uh, the map, it is very, very difficult to uh, individually target each of uh, the components. It feels like you're playing Warcraft 3 to a degree and are trying to hit little squirrels. That is just the level of difficulty of mouse clicking. Of course you can always pause the game but that comes with it, its own set of challenges as it very much interrupts the game flow and also makes it much more tedious and longer. The point that I'm trying to make is if you're focusing your game primarily on stealth and making sure that you're taking out enemies then I would assume that it is going to be very very important that that mechanic in particular is precise and on point. Unfortunately for Stargate Timekeepers, I think that they have spent too little time in the development of these mechanics and therefore created a non-finished product in this regard. That can be fixed and hopefully future uh, changes will make it better and more enjoyable, but as it shows at the moment, the game unfortunately does not allow you to fully um, experience a smooth transition where the core gameplay is uh, working well. Now off to my second point and that one weighs just as much as the point around the actual precision of the gameplay. It is what kind of game does Stargate Timekeepers actually want to be. With regards to the question what kind of game Stargate Timekeepers wants to be, the game itself answers that with they want to be a commando-like, um, rogue-like squad behind enemy lines type of gameplay where the player uh, solves a couple of puzzles mainly consisting out of enemy vision lines that need to be cleverly avoided and or uh, worked through. My question is why? Why, if you do have a uh, IP that is ultra lore rich and comes with a lot of action, out of all of the options would you choose this genre? Um, why would you go for a genre where the player needs suspension of disbelief in order to even think about uh, that that is really Stargate? I give you an example where in Mission 2 where uh, our convoy of, uh, mind you, hundreds of people is being uh, guarded by an entire Stargate 1 team. Uh, they are then running into enemy warriors and instead of just dealing with those enemy warriors, they think it is a great idea to send two leading officers into the uh, fray all by themselves, trying to solve kind of a stealth r riddle game. And really, I don't understand uh, why that is a good idea to begin with. Quite frankly speaking, I think it is a very bad idea and anyone um, who would be in that situation would openly question why would you uh, go and behave like that. Why wouldn't you uh, rush in with your entire team? So that suspension of disbelief prim primarily takes away from the otherwise good gameplay and additionally it asks the question do you really showcase the IP in the most benevolent form are you showing what the whole lore of Stargate is about? I give you a couple of alternatives to think about. If Stargate would be a CRPG like Baldur's Gate or the Kingmaker series where there is plenty of dialogue, a little uh, quest line, wouldn't that be a better way of interesting character interaction and banter of the main characters? Wouldn't there be enough room uh, for each of the different characters to shine? And wouldn't a round based system in some shape or form just make more sense? I give you another example. If the game would focus less on the stealth aspect and more on the part of actual tactical combat, wouldn't it be fun to have a couple of uh, Stargate units actually taking it on with the enemy? Granted, that is not completely lore compatible because you didn't want to fight against most of the enemies um, throughout uh, the uh, series, but you can create environments just like aliens, uh, for instance, did it, where fighting is somewhat discouraged, but you can still pull it off. Fighting in Stargate 
doesn't make any uh, sense. It basically is non-existent because the moment that you're um, running into open uh, warfare, uh, things are heavily, heavily derailed and there's a great likelihood that you're going to lose uh, the game. Or a third idea, make it a more RTS based game. Whether or not that comes with resource building or whether that comes with a small base building um, that then gives you a few elite units that can go through uh, the enemies just like for instance Dawn of War did it. All of that would have been a better concept or a more appealing concept than the concept that we are being uh, served. Frankly speaking the type of game that uh, Stargate turns out to be does not do the IP enough justice because it fills right into the prejudice of those games where um, skeptical buyers are saying why would I give that game a chance it's potentially just a money ripoff that is trying to use the IP and elsewise the content isn't very good or in other words if you are playing this game and it wouldn't be Stargate it would just be a rando game with a couple of uh, enemies and you're just going through the gameplay loop. You wouldn't necessarily think that it is extremely well done. For Stargate, it is just the wrong type of game that they have built. So that unfortunately leads the conclusion or leads to the conclusion of 3 out of 10 on the tactical gameplay layer. We are joining the replayability section, which is going to be short and sweet. Replayability is just up the average ante. There are a couple of things that I liked about the game and a couple of things that I think could be improved. For starters, the game does a good job in offering multiple ways of solving a level. If I take the second level as an example again, there are uh, for starters two different ways and then each of the ways branches out in two different other ways. So offering essentially four different routes that you could take in order to replay the game. There are also different ways of approaching the game depending on how many of the skills you want to use with the characters. Unfortunately, there are uh, elsewise a couple of shortcomings of the game. The levels are never procedurally generated. Get it? You need to uh, save budget and couldn't afford an algorithm to create random levels. That is fine. No problem with it. Um, and the characters are also always pre-generated. So to a degree, when you're rerunning the game, you will need to be a huge fan of Stargate in order to go through the same uh, moves over and over again. Uh, the somewhat complexer levels allow for a certain amount of replayability, but I can promise you at least after the second um, replay, there isn't that much to grasp on. Options how they could have um, prevented that from happening is allowing individual character creation with a few more talents that you can uh, unlock a new game plus mode with heavier and more competent heroes from the get-go maybe even heroes that can take on the enemies so that your replay is being more of a shootout instead of a stealth experience. All of that could have helped in order to get it to above just average. Let's conclude uh, what Stargate Timekeepers is all about. Let's come to the summary. I would give Stargate 4.5 out of 10. I would conclude it as a missed opportunity. It's unfortunately one of those games uh, which is capitalizing on an existing IP but doesn't do it full justice. The game itself is the wrong type of game for a lore rich environment like Stargate and even if you discount that fact, the core mechanic of a Commandos like game isn't very well um, concluded. The game itself does an okay job in creating that but soon becomes a little bit monotonous and repetitive. And that in itself is unfortunate because the Stargate universe has so much more to offer. Whether the producers were running out of money, whether it was just a project that was not really done enthusiastically, or whether there were creative differences that resulted into kind of a compromise that didn't really serve anyone, be it as it may, the, the resulting game isn't as polished as it could be. 
I would give you a caution as you might want to buy it uh, type of recommendation for the game, but only if you're a hardcore Stargate fan and if you like sneaky commando games. If you don't uh, like either of that, then the game is potentially not for you. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Stargate Timekeepers. Have I nailed it? Have I been wrong in any of the accounts? And as always, see you in the next review. Bye bye.